I saw it coming halfway through the episode, but I still wasn't ready for it. Let's talk about it. What's up, people? Welcome back to Black Eat Cool. We're here talking about episode four, The Whole World is Watching, uh, the newest episode of The Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um... But before we dive into it, please know that we will be spoiling. So if you haven't seen the episode, go check it out. But before you go do that, go hit that five stars or hit that like button. Five stars if you're listening to the audio version. Like button if you're listening to this on the YouTube channel. Also, put some comments down below. Shows YouTube you mess with what we're doing over here. Greatly appreciate it. It's another way to support. You also can support by sharing it and telling everybody you know about the channel and the podcast. Just in case you didn't know the podcast is Black Key Cool Podcast. Go look it up. Go check it out. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> secondly, um, if you would like to financially support us over here, you can always hit us up on our cash app, dollar sign Black Eat Cool. That's a great way. Or check out our merch at Black Eat, our Teespring slash Black Eat Cool. I always mess that up. Get a t-shirt, tag us in, tag us in the t-shirt you get on Instagram. You know, hit us up at, uh, hashtag BGC84. Yeah, that would be great. Let us know. Let us see it. Really cool. But that all out the way. We're about to spoil this, so if you don't realize, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Because this is one of the best episodes of the season. Definitely really good. So, it starts out with uh, Bucky and uh, I thought it was Aya, Ayo, I think it's Ayo. They're around this campfire. This is actually six years ago in Wakanda. And she is about to spout out the words that turn him into the Winter Soldier. They're trying to see if they successfully deprogrammed him. And then she starts to say the words. You see he get emotional. He's crying. She finished saying it. And she says, you're free. And he just starts bawling his eyes out. Great scene. A very emotional scene. Really gives him um, uh, an aspect of you can tell he was really there in Wakanda. And they actually do care about him in Wakanda. I mean, he is the white wolf, so they definitely care about him. But it also kind of sees their relationship a little bit, because as you know, last episode we ended with her coming there saying, uh, I'm here to get Zemo in Wakanda. So that was crazy. But then we get back to uh, present day. She's there talking to him. She's like, how could you break him out after everything he's done? He murdered our King Kachaka. He uh, embarrassed us. The losses we have lost, the losses we have from him, and the shame we have for him, and then some of that, that I, I I didn't think about it, but yeah, he would pick up the language. He started talking in Wakanda to her. I was like, oh stop, fuck you know Wakanda. Oh, uh, I want to know Wakanda. I, was it Wakandanese? I don't know. I don't know how you would say it, but he was talking in Wakanda. That was tight. I know it's not a real language. It's a mix of two other African languages. They kind of blend together. But it was kind of cool to see him. He was like, he's a means to an end. Um, and she was like, a means to an end. Uh, you're supposed to be the white wolf or something like that. I I got so excited when he was talking to Wakanda. I kind of glazed over it. But she was like, look, you got eight days and I'm coming for him. Period. And then she walked off. And then <laughs> he, he, Bucky was like, oh, dang. You know he was like, man, they coming. So Bucky goes back to Zemo's place. And Bucky tells Zemo and Sam, like, hey, the Wakanda's here. They're looking for uh, Zemo. Well, he's not, he didn't even say they're looking for Zemo. He's like, they're coming for Zemo in eight days. They're coming for him. And Bucky was like, oh, glad you guys. No, he said, I'm glad you uh, spoke up for me. And he was like, uh, Sam was like, he didn't speak up for you. You just killed Nigel, or Nigel, the doctor. He was like, let's not talk about what I did or did not do. He was like, did or did not do? You shot him. Point blank. You murdered him. <laughs> I don't care if those kind of take you. Sam was like, I'm done with you, bruh. But uh, in the process of talking about that, Bucky and Sam found out that Carly bombed a, G- a GRC uh, building where they were storing supplies, found out that three people got killed. And Zemo tells him, like, look, 
this is the beginning of her downfall. It's only going to get worse from here. She's a supremacist. Uh, there's no way you can take the super serum syndrome, super soldier syndrome, and it not corrupt you and make you be a, a supremacist. And Bucky was like, well, what about Steve? And Zemo was like, well, there's never been another Captain America, has there? And I or no, he said another Steve Rogers. And he, he was true. He was like the super serum, uh, super soldier serum corrupts you, period. It's just the way it is. You become more superior to people, you want more power. It's just the way it is. Steve Roger is the only exception at this point. Which is weird because Bucky has a super serum, super soldier serum. But he didn't He didn't say, Bucky, you and Steve Rogers are the only one. So Bucky already know he's tainted. Like, ah, oh, he already told me I'm tainted. I ain't worth nothing. But Sam is still like, look, I think I can still get to Carly. We just need to go find her and talk to her. Um, and they're trying to figure out w- where they would be. And they, they Sam remembers that, uh, uh, how do you pronounce it? Donna? Danya? Danya. Danya. So Danya died. And Sam was like, oh, she's like a TT. And they was like, TT? And that's when I know there's black writers on this show. Because ain't nobody else know TT like, t- like black people. Come on. There's my auntie, TT. Oh, that was. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, the show went another level up for me just for that moment. Just for that moment, just for that inclusiveness that no one's ever really put in any Marvel thing per se that I can remember to date now, but he actually explained what it means. So, you know, everybody going to be saying my TT now. Um, so it's not ours anymore, but let the world flourish with it. <laughs> but yeah, he's explaining, he's like, TT, the auntie. They definitely gonna do a funeral. If we can find out where it is, we can find Aunt Carly. We can get a chance to talk to her. So now they're on a mission to go find out where that is. They go to a place where the Flag Smashers was. It's kind of a refugee camp. They didn't know the Flag Smashers were there. They're there talking to people, and of course, no one's talking to Sam. No one's talking to Bucky. They're not giving him any information. They're basically just walking off every time they try to talk to him. Um. But then Zemo has his Turkish delights, sits down, it's his candy that he likes a lot, uh, sits down and put them on the um, table, and these kids come over, and he's like, yeah, my son loved these, uh, do you know where Don- Danya's funeral is? I want to give my respects, pay my respects, she was a wonderful person, and of course the kids tell him in secret, I and mean, he tells them, oh, don't tell those guys, they're bad people. Uh, Zemo just doing his trickery, trick, trick, trickery, uh, but he gets the information, and he doesn't tell Bucky and Sam until he they get back to his place, and he slightly tells him, like, yeah, I know where she's gonna be, um, after Sam talks about how Carly is the only one fighting for these people, she, so he understands why they're loyal to her, and, um, that maybe we did abandon them. And uh, Sam's like, Sam was like, no, we didn't. No, uh, Bucky was like, no, we didn't abandon them. Uh, Things changed. He was like, yeah, but they were in a point where countries were inviting them in. Countries that were against them were inviting them in to help, to ask for help to, to build stuff. And so many different people that normally wouldn't be together came together and were united in that five years that we were gone. And then once we came back, the government just ripped that away from people. So that's, and then stop helping people. That's going to make people upset. You re, re, um, re getting those lines that divide each other. You brought them back after they were demolished. And Sam's like, I kind of understand her fight. I don't agree the way she's doing it, but I understand what she's doing and the symbol she's become. And I was like, yeah, he got a point. He got a mad point. Because the whole one world, one people, one world came out of everybody being there after the blip and them trying to survive. They all came together. Countries never were, countries weren't divided then. People were helping each other. Resources were helped throughout each other. It was, it was a, it was a utopia. It was a utopia from a bad situation, but it was a utopia. And when everybody came back, the GRC kind of, ruined that to an extent so they had a leader and carly became that leader on 
even if she didn't want to, she became that leader, unfortunately. But after Sam and Bucky had this conversation, Zemo was like, yeah, I know where the funeral is. And they were like, okay, tell us. He was like, why? Why would I leave my leverage? If I tell you, you're just going to go out there and let uh, leave me be. And Bucky was like, look, the door is on their way. You talking about leverage. You need to tell us now so we have a reason to keep you from them. He's like, I'll, I'll show you. So let's go. So they, they go with him to go find the funeral. But before we get to the funeral, we meet up with Carly and she is with another Flag Smasher and they're getting the rest of the Super ser- super Soldier Serum. I cannot say that for some reason. <laughs> um, and they have a conversation and she's asking, is this the right thing to do to make more of us to help us in this war? And the dude that's with her says something about, um, my dad was in World War II, our great grandfather was in World War II. And something about fighting Nazis. And he was like, yeah, it's always good to beat Nazis. I forgot what he said. It was interesting, but I forgot what he said. Um, But he also said, look, when things were good and bad, there was no gray. And you stepped up and you became a leader uh, that people needed. I never thought there were, like, he said something about how he idolized Captain America. Because he, the... What Cap did made him feel that there were decent people in the world. And he was like, um, I never thought there would be another Cap until I met Chu. So she's got that going on. She's trying. I, I get what she's trying to do. She's being pulled in multiple different directions. She's trying to be good to people. But she's also trying to uh, speak the language of the people that she's fighting against. And unfortunately you kind of lose yourself in that process and you can see her starting to lose herself. Uh, you see even more later when she talks to Sam, but we're not there yet. Um, while uh, Bucky, Sam, and Zemo are on the way to the funeral, of course who shows up? John Walker and Battlestar, a.k.a. Lamar. Oh, Lamar. Uh, they find him, and they were like, how'd you find us? He was like, two Avengers are walking around. People are going to talk. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I'm glad they made it realistic. Like, yeah, you guys are just walking around. Of course they're going to see you. So he's like, look, I'm taking Zemo. You're coming with me. And he, they're like, whoa, 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 calm down. Zemo knows where Carly might be, so we're following Zemo to go to Carly. We're trying to get Carly. And John Walker's like, no, we're not doing that. Where I'm taking you in, it's getting crazy. And he was like, well, then uh, Lamar steps in. He's like, wait, uh, maybe we can go get Carly. And he was like, well, if we do, we're going to have to do a surprise attack. And he was like, and Sam was like, no, I want to go alone so I can talk to her and try to talk her down. And John Walker's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to lose my chance to capture her again. Once again, Lamar steps in and is like, wait, maybe if he can talk her down, we can do this without any casualties. We got to think of a positive way of this. And clearly Lamar is John Walker's conscience. I mean, I hate that trope, but it is what's going on at this point. So we know exactly what's going to happen when he loses his conscience. But John Walker's like, agreed, I'll give you 10 minutes to go talk to her alone. And then we're going to do it my way. So they end up going there. Sam goes to talk to Carly. While Sam's talking to Carly, John Walker locks up Zemo to some. He he, um, handcuffs him to this big machine. Sam's talking to Carly, and he's like, "Look, uh, I got a friend that knows all about the Super Serum Syndrome, Super Soldier Syndrome. I can't say it." And he says that um, the power is going to corrupt you. And it's going to make you a terrorist and make you a, 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 a supremacist. And she's like, no, we're fighting against supremacy. And he's like, really? Uh, he's, what did he say? Um, hold on. He said something about, what did he say? He said something like um, about the GC uh, guys. And she was like, yeah, I'll do it again. I'll kill him again. And he was like, no, I didn't mean it like that. He was like, mm, you said it like that. And he's trying to show her that even though she feels she's right in her fight, the way she's fighting it might be the wrong way. And it might delude her whole message if she's just doing this, the, the stuff just as bad as the guy she's fighting against. Because if we forget, Sam was not a grief counsel, but he was 
he was like a counselor for a lot of soldiers dealing with PSP, PPSD. I, I'm pronouncing that wrong at all. So he knows what he's doing. He knows how to talk to people. So that's another side of Sam I like them showing in this. Like he knows everything is not won by just punching somebody. Sometimes you need to talk to people and find out what's going on with people. But in the midst of their talking, John Walker clearly gets tired. Um, and he gets impatient. And he goes at Bucky. He was like, your partner in there with a super soldier. You're going to let him be in there? His blood is going to be on your hands. Your partner needs help. We need to go in there now. Um, somehow John Walker gets past, uh, Bucky, you know, the super soldier. I don't understand that. Bucky must've just had some weird, I don't know why he let him get past, but he barges in, um, Carly gets mad cause she was starting to trust Sam. She was like, oh, you did this so I could let down my guard. And she was like, no, I'm trying to talk to you. They, I told them I was going to talk to you alone, try to bring you in alone, try to settle this. And now the little bit of trust she was building with her is lost. She takes off. Everybody chases after her. Somehow she gets away from some of them. But then, of course, Zemo escapes as well. He finds Carly, shoots at her. He does hit her in the stomach, but she drops the serum. And then... They made it seem like he was about to take it and he just crushes all the serum. You can see that he is just ecstatic that he's crushing the serum while he's doing that. Carly gets away. And then out of nowhere, John Walker hits Zemo with his shield, knocks him out. Of course, John Walker see all the serum on the ground. He thinks he destroyed it all. And then, of course, there's one little vial that John Walker picks up and stores away for later because course give this crazy man some serum but um after that they end up going to back to um zemo's hideout well his place and hold on so like i said at zemo's place john walker's kind of arguing that they lost carly because uh sam wanted to talk to her and saying she's too far gone and uh, right before he's about to say something stupid, the door comes in and he does the stupidest thing. They're, they're basically like, we're here for Zemo. And John Walker's like, I can't let you have him. Um, he was like, hey, I'm Captain America. And they looked at him like whatever. And he was like, how about we just put these pointy sticks down and have a real conversation how are you insulting some people that you don't even know, my dude? What is wrong with you? I know where this is going. I know where this is ending. And they was just like, they're trying, they trying to be as nice as possible. They're like, look, um, we're here to get Zemo. That's all we want, and we'll be on our way. So hand him over. And he says some even more dumb stuff, talking about the Dora Milaje don't have jurisdiction here. Oh, is Io, Io was like the Dora Milaje has jurisdiction wherever the Dora Milaje choose to be. I was like, oh, it's about to go down. Because, of course, Sam did, I mean, uh, John Walker put his hand on the Dora Milaje shoulder and they went to work. She, Io was just, oh, it was three of them. I was fighting John Walker, giving him the business. He was just getting worked. Then um, the other two started fighting B- Battlestar, and <laughs> Bucky wasn't doing anything. He was he was sipping some tea, just watching it. So was Zemo. Sam jumps in to try to help uh, Battlestar. Eventually, Sam's like, "Bucky, we need to stop them." So Bucky steps in and he stops. Uh, Io from beating up John Walker, but in the process, Io did something to his arm and hit him with this pressure point code, and his whole arm fell off. He looked just bewildered. He didn't know that could happen. My man was like, "Oh no, you did it! I didn't know you could do that." Took his whole arm off, and of course, in the process, one of the uh, Dora picked up the shield. She did it so dope, too. She flipped the shield up. Also, while this is going on, Zemo escaped in the bathroom. So once Io learned he escaped, she was like, all right, let's go. 
There's no reason for us to be here. So they they were about to kill everybody. Sam stopped them from killing um, uh, Lamar one time. Bucky stopped Io from killing um, John Walker. The girl, the Dora that picked up the shield had the shield, which there's got to be a toy made of that. The Dora with the shield and their spears, there's got to be a toy made of that because that's a fire toy. Uh, but they was like, she was like, uh, leave him the shield. And she just threw it down to him like, you don't even know how to use this, bro. Come on. So they left. And then uh, <laughs> you can just see the disappointment on John Walker's face. I, I think he even said he was like, they weren't even super soldiers. Oh, which lets me know further. He's about to take that serum. Um, and then uh, we have a little uh, after that, we have a situation with Carly. She uh, is talking to her flash masters like, am I doing the wrong thing? Because she's healing for the wound. And they're like, look, we can't battle Sam, Bucky, the new Captain America. And also, we got the power brokers on our on our tail. We are fighting like two to three different wars. We can't do that. And she's like, well, I'll worry about the power broker later. But we're just going to need to separate Sam and Captain America. So she's hatching a plan to separate them two. Um, after the door left, I guess John Walker left with Lamar. They're in some cafe, and I, oh, I forgot! Before the door came in, um, Zemo asked Sam, "Was he ever offered the Super Soldier Serum?" He said no. And he's like, well, hypothetically, if you'd have took, if they would have offered you, would you eat it? He said, no. I mean, would you, would you uh, drink it? Would you take it? He said, no. He was like, wow, you said that really fast. I like that. He was like, yeah, I've already seen what happens. He was like, I. He said something about he didn't want it before, but now that he knows what happened to Isaiah, he knows that he made the right decision not to want to take it. And Zemo's is surprised and seems to be. Um, respect Sam a little more about that, uh, which is kind of cool. It is kind of cool. But then, uh, Dora fight Carly. Now we're, uh, talking with John Walker and Lamar. Lamar, John Walker's like, if you had the chance to take the super serum, would you take it? And he was like, yeah, I would. He was like, aren't you worried about the effects? And he was like, well, from what I understand, the super serum just amplifies the person you are. And he was like, you're you're John Walker. You got three metal hearts. You're a great person. But he was like, yeah, I got rewarded for what I did in uh, Iraq. And what I did in Iraq shouldn't have been rewarded. He was like, no, you're a good person. Don't worry about it. Uh, and he they, he was like, yeah. He was like, if we had that Super Serum Syndrome, ah, I can't say that word. We would have saved so many people that day. And he's like, yeah. So that's pretty much after that conversation, you know, he took the serum. Um, but then we get a scene where Sarah, Sam's sister, gets a call from Carly, and Carly asks her, uh, she's like, are you Sarah? Um, um, I just got chased by your, your, no, she said your brother's working with the new Captain America, and he was like that, she was like, that's not my, I didn't pick him. She was like, what do you mean? She was like, uh, America doesn't care what my opinion is, so why would I care what their mascot is? I was like, oh, snap. She's right. She's right. <laughs> He's like, I didn't pick him, and I know my brother's not working with him. She was like, well, I need you to get a message to your brother and tell him to come alone, or I have to come to you and see your nephew or see your, your son. She gave him both their names. It was like on the dock. So, she was, so Sarah clearly told... Um, Falcon, oh, I forgot about this. Fal- later, earlier, Falcon asks uh, uh, Sharon, that's Sharon, not Sarah, Sharon, asks Sharon <laughs> to keep tabs on, first she wanted to get eyes on the funeral, then she asked him, then he asked her to keep tabs on um, Captain America, John Walker, to find out where he is so he wouldn't surprise them again. And then... In the process of that, when um, Falcon went to go meet Carly, he was pissed. He put his suit on, so you know the wings coming out. Of course, Bucky was like, I'm not letting you go along. So, you know, his his um, his homie came with him. 
uh, they're talking to Carly, and Carly's like, look, I, I, I thought I could trust you. I wanted you to help me fight this fight. And Sam's like, I understand your fight, but I believe you're doing it the wrong way. And then out of the blue, uh, Sharon calls Falcon. And it was like, hey, the, uh, John Walker is at your location, and he's moving fast. And that's when Sam realizes it's set up to try to kill Cap. New Cap, not good Cap. So he flies off. A fight. He flies off to find them. They start fighting with other Flash Masters. Uh, John Walker, Battlestar are fighting. They get separated. They take Battlestar, tie him up. Uh, Cap is looking for him. And he comes in contact with Carly. And, and uh, during the fight, the Flash Masters are using a lot of knives. <laughs> and John Walker's like, what's up with all the knives? This fight is not bad. It's a really good hand-to-hand, close combat fight. Uh, Falcon comes over. Bucky comes over where John Walker's is. But before uh, John Walker was fighting one Flash Smashers, and Bucky, I mean, Sam saw him bend the pipe. He was like, what did you do? What did you do? And he's like, they got Lamar. We need to find him. Uh, Lamar does escape, comes to the fight, but... I already knew it was going to happen to him. I knew he was going to die. In the process of the fight, they were trying to basically kill Cap. They uh, Carly ended up punching John, um, punching uh, Lamar so hard it kills him. And of course, John Walker goes crazy after he sees his friends killed. The Flash Masters all run off. John Walker follows him. He catches the the one Flash Master that idolized Cap and really felt for Cap, thought he would help people and thought he made people look decent. And, of course, John Walker knocks him down. He's like, where's Carly? And he was like, I don't know. I'm not the one that did it. And John Walker commenced to killing this man with the shield. I don't think he decapitated him, but I think he burst through his chest and then he lifts up the shield and there's blood on it. And of course he does this in the town square. So everybody's taking pictures and they have this amazing, traumatizing, terrible, beautiful shot of John Walker holding the shield with blood at the bottom of it. Oh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful symbol for America. You know what you did America, but it was, it was, oh, They went hard on this one. They went hard. Oh, because Cap never got blood on that shield like that. Not in that aspect. Whew. It was was a hard episode. So I can't wait for episode five. Yes. Let me know what you felt about this episode. Hit me down in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. Hit me up on Blackie Cool on Instagram and Twitter. If you're listening to this on any other uh, podcast app, let me know how you feel about it. How you feel about the series in the whole I think it's fire, must watch, definitely must watch. But yeah, thank you for checking out the review. As always, guys, appreciate the support. Go ahead and share, tell everybody about this, and I'll talk to you on the next one.